Hello and welcome back to the Genesis Designs and Minecraft Bench and today I'm going to do a quick snip review on this kit here the IBG Models Fockerwolf 190D-9 so this is the early production so called Cotbus version the Cotbus being where they were built I believe uh, there have been subsequent releases now of this kit this, I've had this a little while to be honest I've been too lazy to do the review up until now um, what a great release though when I saw these and, uh, and the renders and everything popping up on Facebook and ha and what have you they did look amazing didn't they so I was very very keen to get one um, I picked this up from Antics in Bristol via Andy Hills and it's actually a bargain it's £20 or so really really good price given the competition and, and the prices that they have so standard got paint schemes on the side there here are some other releases that IBG have in the works or out already and this one's particularly interesting this is the D15 torpedo bomb which I don't believe was ever actually built um, and that scheme that beautiful scheme is a full-on what if and I really do lo like the idea of manufacturers legitimizing what if paint schemes anyway stop waffling woman let's have a look IBG models are from Poland, fairly new on the scene, and most of the releases I've seen from them previously have actually been vehicles. So it's nice to see them branching out into aircraft. And what you should know straight away is there are a million tiny sprues in it. It's quite a large box for a small model. And there are a lot of different sprues. But anyway, let's get in there have a look see what we've got I've already opened this a little bit so I'll get this one out first so lower wing just look at the surface detail on this thing Now because I'm a, a, I'm not going to call myself names, I built a 130 second door a few years back now um, and I riveted the airframe and I riveted the airframe in accordance with scale drawings, I didn't do it, I didn't do a fantasy land rivet job on it, I, I, I copied the actual pattern and because of that I can tell you that these things are festooned with rivets, there are many and this replicates that very nicely many many rivets this is recessed recessed rivets very very fine very fine panel lines what looks like flash on this isn't it's actually replicating the weld seam nice one piece propeller yeah really sweet and I like this so how to mitigate the wing joint on a 190 make it most of the whole lower fuselage let's see how that works in practice shortly I'll put this down over here right. next up fuselage one piece complete with slightly awkward looking extension metal tail this has got some raised rivets on it raised detail it's really hard to tell until you rub your finger across them but you can hear that hopefully and these plastic parts are doing that thing where they are to my eyes may not come across on camera making the surface detail look like it might be slightly less than crisp and what I'm going to do later on is actually spray a little bit of some paint on these just to see, see what they look like under paint and allow you to also judge for yourselves based on that how this really looks. There's a slight kink in the fuselage side here, modelled, which I've never noticed before actually on any other 190 kit. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm sure there's some expert in out there who might be able to elaborate in the comments whether that's Fantasy Island or not 
This tiny sprue just has the two upper wing surfaces on it. And here's another really nice touch. I think pretty much every other 190 kit I've come across, and I've built a few, has had the wing joint straight along this entire upper surface. It's fair enough, it's logical. However, a real aircraft does not work that way. The wing fairings extend onto the upper surface and you don't have a straight joint going front to rear like you do on a lot of aircraft. Here, IBG have moulded the gun panels and in fact part, the part directly forward of them onto the top of this wing surface so that you don't have to worry about putting filler and what have you and trying to get rid of a seam across here that shouldn't be there. That is a really nice touch and it shows that they've done their research and more importantly perhaps adhered to it. There you go, look at that detail. So we've now got three more sprues here. These are a little bit bigger with, um, let's be honest, a plethora of parts details and whatnot. So the kit does include a full engine. I don't believe that th that is, I don't believe there is an intent really by IBG for this to have cowls open to show the engine but the Dora does have open wheelbase so the, the lower rear part of the engine is quite visible through the wheelbase uh, and rather than just supplying a sort of plug or nothing at all there is in fact really very acceptable rendition of most of the engine here. It's quite impressive. Next up. A bit bigger. So here we've got some wheels. Smooth tread tyres or with just the sort of the moulding bands on them. One piece wheel and tyre. Undercarriage doors and legs. And the inside of the doors has the sort of brackets and things on there to mount to the legs. Here options with the radiator. So the 190D had what's called an annular radiator, meaning it's in a ring in the back of this cowl. Uh, rather than having radiator baths under the fuselage or the wing, as most other aircraft of the time did, the radiator is situated up here in a circle. So this one has got sort of a flap arrangement all closed and this one has them open so that you can see the radiator inside and this being the front of the engine. Got separate ailerons with some fairly intrusive rib tape detail. Listen. <laughs> Tower planes, uh, large bomb, elevators and a cockpit tub. Please focus. Come on. Not having it today are we? Let's try it this way around. There we go. Console detail all moulded on. It's, just, it's extremely adequate. And so tiny as well. And finally, here we have three different spinner options for that one propeller. A rather wonderful wing spar and firewall. Rudder, instrument panel, combing. These are ammunition boxes here. Pilot seat, two different drop tank options. Tail wheel, some cannons and engine mounts. Various options again of engine mount. Very, very comprehensive set of parts. It's such a tiny model, cramming in a lot of detail there. Transparency wise, I'm gonna leave them in the bag if you'll forgive me. In fact, no, I will have to take them out. I'm going to have to build it anyway. So, 
followed Edward's lead. Edward were the first ones to do it, I believe, with their initial 190A release, where they provided a separate canopy moulding for open and closed. Because the 190, the, the canopy's actually got a hinge. That's That piece of framing in the top is actually a hinge. And the tracks clearly get narrower as, as the canopies push rearward. So the cockpit transparency itself, the, the main canopy, has to be narrower to actually fit if you fit it in the open position. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't feel like I've explained that terribly well, but so consequently, we have here two unblown and two blown canopies. Look at the profile, and uh, one set is is narrower. I don't know if I try and get a nice plan view for you there. You can see that this this canopy is significantly narrower than this one at the front here and that's to allow for fitting in that open position and then obviously there's your windscreen and a little bit of gun sight there they aren't optically they're a bit wobbly they're, they're clear they're not really flawed as such but i hope you can see there that they're a little a little bit like old-fashioned glass optically speaking but again it's such a tiny part i think it would, i think it'll be fine and then in the same pack here we've got the decals which I'll come back to and a piece of um, photo etch there are some bomb fins there undercarriage uh, taut links or scissor links if you prefer rudder pedals um, a bit of undercarriage bay detail and some other parts there's a, a scribing template there looks like I'm not sure what these pieces are but we'll have a look at the instructions in a second there you go it's going to underexpose because of the glinting but hopefully there you go get an idea it's quite a nice sheet that quite a comprehensive fret instructions then an A4 book you've got some history here that is in Polish and that is in English First page is your usual sprue tour. Um, no numbers, just sort of a like CAD rendering almost. Photo etch decals. Colour call outs here. We have Vallejo, Hataka, Life Colour, Mr. Hobby, and AK Interactive. Real colour and otherwise. Which is I think that's the first time I've seen those included in, a, in an instruction. Mr. Hobby, so that is the aqueous versions, H rather than C. Uh, and Life Colour, Vallejo and Hataka, as I say. And these are sort of uh, not, not so much in colour, but kind of coloured in a bit. Uh, sort of as a quick visual reference of the colours. But you see you've got triangles showing you the colours. Construction wise then, you're building an engine first, engine block with the bearers, the exhaust, superchargers etc. all fitted and the colour call outs are these triangles. Then you go on to the cockpit tub with the photo etched parts. Does it have a photo etched instrument panel? It does not. But there is a handle. The fuselage guns with the ammunition boxes and all of that gets attached to that rather wonderful wing spar and the combing cockpit uh, combing is attached to the top. That then all plugs onto the engine. And the whole lot is entrapped in the fuselage. Really quite impressive. There there that so that's a uh, photo etched scribing template that's useful is to help you to reinstate the detail that you may lose when you correct the fuselage seam that is a lovely touch nice well done here's some instructions on reprofiling the aerial on the fin or the aerial post on the fin Ah, now these photo etch parts that I wasn't recognising then look to be 
something to do with the wheelbase. Looks quite complex, doesn't it? Let me bring it up closer for you. Folding some parts to make up sort of gun covers and whatnot. Then add the lower wing to the fuselage and, and, and then put the upper wings to the lower wing. Personally, I would test fit this in operation. I'm, I'm fairly sure that you'd be able to construct the wing completely and then add it as a, in a one rather than doing this. The, the, the only downer with, with doing it this way is it makes the cleanup of the leading edge seem more awkward, particularly right here inboard near the root. Adding the tails, then the engine pieces, some uh, photo etch there for the glare shield. <coughs> And then the undercarriage and its doors and wheels, drop tanks, tail wheel and major aerial, that big aerial that has under the wing there, that's photo etched. There's your canopy stuff. Closed door open. And an overall view of the finished model, complete with all that rivet detail. And that shows you how to do the aerial because on the Dora, the radio aerial, when the canopy is open, it just droops down. It's not tensioned inside like the earlier one. Also available, there's that beautiful What If D15. Love that. Stencil layout is detailed here. Nice big views, it's easy to, to work out where stuff needs to go with that. And then finally three pe three pages showing the included schemes. So yellow 9, JG54, fairly pretty much bog standard, 76, 81, 82, same here. JG26, and this one's a little bit more out there. JG2 in 1945 and that's got the um, later sort of sky style RLM76 with some overpaint on the nose uh, which I read somewhere was to help camouflage them on the ground to sort of replicate the sun dappled effect of when they're hidden under trees sort of thing but that's, that's a pretty neat scheme so that's the instructions decals themselves then Get that cut properly. Quite a comprehensive sheet. That's your main markings, those are pretty simple obviously. Swastikas are included but they're in halves to satisfy laws in some places. And these decals are printed by TechMod. The only one who's not used TechMod, they're really good, very very thin. You may if you're not careful you can have issues with these kind of curling up on themselves because they're so thin but all that I've used before have always been very very good spin a spiral as well <coughs> and then this sheet is entirely stencil data right down to the fuel tanks instrument panels and consoles the, the head armour plate, everything, no step markings for the wings, all, all there. Very, very nice sheet indeed. Alrighty then, let's get snipping, just the main basic airframe parts. Okay then, we have snip snipperood and now we have a nice little set of parts. Uh, observations from that is the 
the attachment points on some of the parts are quite large uh, width wise and quite quite chunky uh, but a lot of the a lot of them are done in that way where they attach on the inside surface rather than on the edge which I, I don't really like that method personally uh, in some ways it makes it easier to clean up in others it doesn't really make any odds but there is a fair bit in places of uh, edge flash if you like um, not great sheets of it in the frog style but um, just where the edge of the mould is this one in particular this piece in particular uh, along sort of one corner a little bit of flash poking off sometimes that doesn't really matter um, it will kind of squish out of the way and not really be an issue um, with parts this small I'd say it probably mostly will be an issue so do do clean that off and there was also a few places where the ejector pin circles as you see here you can see them all on the inside of this wing panel well you would if the video camera would focus there you go I've got that thing where there's a bit of flash sticking up so again you need to make sure and trim that off but with that said let's have a look at putting some of these pieces together now I'm going to glue this onto here just for the sake of uh, making it easier to deal with so bear with me turn your extra thin of course and put that out of the way right. So a lot of the joints on this, rather than having alignment pins, the traditional alignment pins, it's got the stepped joint face. Um, it's very small. I don't know if you can see, there's a sort of a ledge along the bottom here. And the other part has an indent along the bottom. and those two parts interlock which is fine if it works um, if if there's any uh, misalignment in the mouldings or the tools it's going to be very very difficult much more time consuming to put it right than it would be if it were just a simple locator pin and a hole but these thankfully are aligning nicely now this is the world's flimsiest fuselage at this point because the most of the lower fuselage is made up of the wing. So it really could it really could be doing anything it wanted right now. So it's very floppy. So that's that together and let's just introduce the cockpit tub and I think I might hold that in with the aid of some blue tack and it's possibly going to be immediately apparent to some of you why the instructions show joining the top wing after the lower because you aren't going to be able to slide the wing along this cranked spar.
This cockpit tub isn't really sitting where it's supposed to. It is at the front, but it, not so much at the back. There we go, that's a bit better. Cool. No issues there so far. With careful uh, application of glue, that uh, lower fuselage slash wing joint is, isn't going to need any help anywhere. Hopefully it finally comes into focus, hopefully you can see. With the exception of the, the very, very half part here, that, that will need a little bit of help, but not a lot. The front as well, it just, just sits in there. And this is a very harsh test because there is no glue, so I can't sort of finagle it into position and let the glue do the work. It's, it's literally, it either fits properly or it doesn't when you do it like this. And, and it does, so that's that's good. And see how that cranked spar, which also forms part of the wheel bay, much like the real thing, no doubt, uh, has just sort of aligned itself into its slots quite happily. Like so, and I'm not going to glue that in, obviously, but uh, it's just sitting there quite well. So let's see if this gun panel is going to play ball. That will help from the front of the fuselage up a little bit more. Yes, it absolutely is. Going to play ball, that is. Now, if there are any with pieces like this and with what I'm doing, it's important not to judge too harshly if it seems a little narrow or a little wide because with the flexibility of these parts, the stuff that gets fitted inside is going to have a big part to play in how this all fits together. And of course we don't have anything on the inside so it's not not necessarily holding itself the way it's supposed to. There. What's that on? And the forward sort of Radiator cowl it pops on the end here. And it's such a tiny model that these strips of six millimeter Tamiya tape are just looking like uh, <laughs> super, super massive. All right. So far, so good. This gun panel, as I say, it is sitting up a little bit at the back. It does just ever so lightly press into position. And the front, I know you can't see it now because of the tape, but it sits quite flush without any real bother. And as I said, the internal parts are going to have a big part to play on that. So, moving on, upper wings, hopefully. It's quite an exciting join line with all these other pieces of raised what, what have you. Hopefully that should, oh yes, slot in like a champ. And the way uh, the designers have split this wing joint up, there isn't any need for seam rectification as long as you get it flush and smooth because the seams that are there are the seams that are there on the real thing, the panel lines if you want. To call them that. There you go. Again, that's sitting slightly narrow at the back where the flap is. There's a, a, a slight gap, it isn't big. But as I say, without glue and without the internals, I can't say for sure that that is wrong. Yeah, this one's this side's the same. Slight gappiness. I think it is sitting correctly because the lower pieces are that joint is completely smooth and flush. So I think that slight gap there is going to be a thing. I personally wouldn't worry too much about it. Probably put a little bit of Mr. Surfacer in and just buff the excess off with a cotton bud with some Mr. Colour thinner on it, just to remove the visual 
gappiness you know there's the, the seam is still there but it doesn't look like a gap because it doesn't go all the way down if that makes sense there. Um, I did cut off the tail planes um, they do come separate elevators so slightly minimal benefit to be had from showing them but I mean they're just slotting on tabs quite a loose fit for those to yeah there you go they do fit they're absolutely fine a little bit of glue will be required and obviously I don't want to glue anything at this point so there you go um oh I sniffed I'm so sorry there's your fit uh really can't complain with that it's a little bit bitty a little bit bitty that's not very good England is it it's a little bit fidgety um this one um any of you that watch my videos and may have seen my arm hobby p51 this will sort of recap at the end uh in which i mentioned that that, that seemed to be a there seemed to be schools of thought on the way to break these kits down um these modern 170 second kits are very detailed and, and, and accomplished kits compared to what we used to from years ago but you seem to have your sort of Edward side of the fence where there's a high parts count a lot of small pieces and a lot of parts break down as a and on the other side you have your sort of Tamiya Airfix armor camp where the parts count is a lot lower and the detail is incorporated into sort of larger assemblies rather than lots and lots of small parts this one definitely falls into the Edward side of things um, I think that the style of moulding and the representation of, of surface detail is quite Edward-esque as well but overall I'm I'm quite impressed that considering the, the sort of the breakdown we've got here that's gone together beautifully without any effort no um, no advanced parts preparation or anything like that I've literally just smoothed off the spruce dubs with my um, scalpel blade is all I've done and that's gone together beautifully now I did say I was going to test this surface detail with some uh, some paint so um, just wait there a moment just before I paint I've noticed something remember when I was looking through the instructions and I said I wasn't really sure about that hole inserting the top wings onto the already glued on lower wing thing uh, it isn't obvious in the instructions whether or not you can do that a different way but I've just been detaping it and if anyone's really nervous about that form of construction you could do it like this the fuselage on the one hand wing with cockpit attached via the spar on the other and they do slot together perfectly happily however that does not allow obviously for the engine construction so page your money takes your choice um, but as I've shown with the taping the me method uh, of construction as advertised by the instructions does actually work so possibly moot anyway as I said wait there a moment there we go a couple of bits of wing painted with some Mr Paint MRP light slate grey for absolutely no reason other than it was to hand and hopefully you can see that the surface detail is in no way soft or blobby it's just a visual sort of um, it's an optical illusion caused by the sort of swirl marks and what have you in the plastic from the moulding process hopefully it's fairly obvious I should have picked a colour that didn't match the plastic quite so damn well shouldn't I but there you go it isn't remotely sort of soft or squidgy it just a little bit looks that way without any paint on it with the flat coat on there it will look even less so so there you go so overall then IBG Dora 172nd what a beautiful kit uh, obviously I've not fully built it obviously there could be pitfalls and problems along the way I can't um, I can't really get away from that with this type of review um, 
but it, it really doesn't look it, does it? Considering how fiddly that uh, parts breakdown is, that's that dropped together beautifully with just tape. Um, and truthfully, using tape like that is a, is a very, very inefficient way of building things. So it's a, it's a measure of a good model if it works that well with just a little bit of tape. So yeah, I'm super impressed. It um, retails, as I said, in the UK around about the £20 mark. I think it's safe to go out on a limb and say this isn't really aimed at beginners. Uh, the use of photo etch for construction in a way that you know they don't offer a plastic part alternative as people like Edward mostly do some of this needs to be done with etch and there isn't an alternative um, they're sort of I think somewhat fiddly parts break down and construction it's clearly not aimed at beginners but with a with a good bit of parts prep uh, and care when gluing together um, I, I do think this is going to make into a stunning little model um, and I'm quite enthused to actually have a go at it although no promises it'll ever end up on YouTube but, but there you go hopefully helpful if anyone's considering any of the IBG doors clearly they they have released I think three of these now they're all going to be roughly the same parts and sides so this will give you a good idea of what to expect again a big thank you to Andy Hills um, this came from Antics in Bristol as I said at the beginning um, I love it, um, I'll probably get some more, hopefully you like it too. So for now, it only remains for me to say, look after yourselves, look after each other, and Genesis out. <laughs>